Hello, everyone. Hola, mundo. Welcome, world. Again, this is Jackie Bouvier, and I'm beyond excited. I think all day long I've been just giddy, excited, and looking forward to tonight. I mean, we're wearing my red lipstick because this is so amazing. I want to share with you that on Voces Poderosas 2023, the Hispanic Heritage Month uh, edition, we have the honor and pleasure of introducing to you the amazing, legendary Dolores Huerta, you guys. She is a living legend, a civil rights icon. Dolores Huerta is one of the most influential Hispanics of the 20th century. She is a leader, una mujer, and I'm just so proud of her and proud to be able to have her here in Voces Poderosas. And I just want to say thank you, honestly. I can't thank you enough for saying yes. You're a powerful influence. You are the influencer. Even when you Google, she's like the icon of the United States. <laughs> and I'm just super excited to hear your story. And I just want everybody to know you, the younger generations, uh, those young Latinas like my daughter who's turning 21 this week, I just want them to know who Dolores Huerta is. Who are you? What is your story? And uh, what does Hispanic Heritage Month mean to you, your culture? And what has it meant throughout the years? Because as you and I know, it's not just one month, right? <laughs> it's all the days of the year. And I also want people to understand the different cultures. You know, I'm Salvadoreña, but we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth generation Hispanics. So what does that mean to you? Dolores Huerta, welcome. Welcome to Voces Poderosas, and thank you for being a powerful voice. No, thank you very much for, for inviting me to your program. I, pre I really appreciate it. And you asked me who I am. Well, I'm Dolores Huerta. And, and thank you for all of those uh, affirmatives that you gave me. You made me sound like the Blue Beetle. <laughs> 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 but... Uh, Anyway, I was born in uh, New Mexico, uh, in a mining coal town in northern New Mexico, a town called Dawson, New Mexico, okay? And uh, my parents on my mother's side were talking about generations. Uh, my family goes back 14 generations in New Mexico. And, and that's that's on my mom's side, okay? Uh, one of my great-grandmothers came from Spain, Maria de Jesus Baena, and wow. one of my Great grandfathers came from England, of all things, and his name was Marshall St. John. That's on my mother's side. On my dad's side of the family, my dad's family was from Durango, Mexico, and my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, was from Zacatecas. Oh, and wow. and so, it, but I I'm here, and I can I kind of consider myself a, a New Mexican uh, because, of course, that's where I was born. That's from my early years, but then the rest of my time uh, in California. My dad, my parents divorced, and my mother brought us to California when I was six and a half years old. So I was raised in California, and I was raised in a town in Sacramento called Stockton, California. And I love my town where, where I grew up uh, because uh, there were so many uh, young people of different ethnic groups, okay? Mm. I had Japanese friends and Chinese friends and Oki friends, <laughs> uh, Mexican friends from Mexico. Yeah, a lot of uh, black friends also. So I really was very fortunate that, the, and from Italy also, Italy and Greece and all of these other countries. So I was very fortunate that I grew up in, in that town. So I got my ethnic studies from my friends. I was very lucky. Oh, that's beautiful. That's mm -hmm. amazing. That's amazing. So that's just the way that it should be, I think, well-rounded and understanding different ethnicities and backgrounds. So mm -hmm. just tell us a little bit about this journey trajectory that got you to become this iconic woman that we all look up to. Well, I was a Girl Scout for about 10 years of my life. And by the way, the majority of the women in the Congress were Girl Scouts, okay? And uh, that was a very big part of my upbringing. Then uh, I became a teacher uh, I taught uh, elementary school, and then I became an organizer, and I quit uh, teaching school once I found out that you could bring people together, get them to act in a collective way, and make changes. And so I knew there were so many things that needed to be changed, so I became an organizer, I be an, an, an activist and an organizer, and that's where I am t still today. Yes. So, yeah, I worked, uh, we, Cesar Chavez and I belong to another organization called the Community Service Organization, 
when we learned about registering people to vote, getting people out to vote, getting people to run for office. And that's where we learned about uh, uh, civics and electoral politics. And then Sessa and I started the United Farm Workers, uh, which of course became very popular nationwide for the work that we did, especially with the Great Boycott. And then I left the United Farm Workers in 2002 and started my own foundation, the Dolores Huerta Foundation. And we do a lot of that same work, that civil work that I spoke about, working on redistricting, uh, working on getting people to vote, uh, you know, supporting people that are running, good people that, that are running for the legislature. And by, oh, and I also became a board member of a group called the Feminist Majority Foundation, where we encourage women to run for office. And uh, we did a feminization, a power campaign to get women uh, all up and down the state of California to run for office. And uh, that year we got about 30 women elected uh, to the state oh, legislature. Wow. So it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. That's just amazing. What, what can you share with us that can professionally in your area of expertise help positively encourage and power or shed light on other Latinas who look up to you or Latinos who are saying, how how can I become this activist just like her? Well, I would say just get involved. That's all you have to do. We have a, elections coming up. Uh, and in some places like the state of Virginia, they're going to be held this year. And so we want women to get involved. There's going to be a lot of electoral campaigns going on for next year also. And that this is the way that we learn our organizing skills is by working on campaigns. So we want to encourage women to please volunteer and take that civic action that needs to be taken. Great. So would you say that would be the word of advice or do you have any word of advice for everyone that's watching? Yeah, well, the reason I, I, I encourage people uh, to work on campaigns is because you're working on campaigns, you're talking to people that you don't know, whether it's on the phone or it's in person, and you're encouraging them to get involved. And I think that while we're trying to empower other people, we're also empowering ourselves because that gives us the kind of courage that we need to speak up. And when, when we're campaigning for a good cause, then you know we feel very justified in what we're saying and what we're doing. And that really strengthens, strengthens what I call uh, our, our psychic self, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, our mm -hmm. self because a lot of times we don't do things because we, we, because we feel inhibited or we th think people are going to make fun of us or we mm -hmm. do something that we shouldn't be doing so when we get involved at the grassroots level then we learn all those skills that we need to then do whatever we want to do and I always like to say to women especially a lot of times we as women we don't go for or for a position that we aspire to and because we always think oh I don't have the experience I don't have the education, but I say, do it like the guys do. Just go for it. <laughs> Learn on the job. That's right. I find it so enlightening, so intriguing that it is so powerful to just do it, right? Just get out there, believe, do it. And I think more than anything, what I admire of you the most, Dolores, is the power of influence you have because you understand the heart. You understand the mind and you understand what people need in that moment, right? And I think um, that's, you know, I always say you're a leader, not because you're, in, you're, everyone knows you, you're a leader because you have influence over people. And I think that's very powerful of you and, and very intriguing. And I think that that's something that we should all take today, right? Is know that you have that power, just like you said, right? That power to, to just motivate, empower and uh, just activate. Well, I think all of us, all, all of us have that power. We just don't use it often enough. Again, because we think people will, will make fun of us, or people will think, "Well, oh, she's being a braggart, or whatever," you know, or she's being a b the b word, <laughs> you know. So we, as women, have to learn how to use our power, and we as Latinos have to use our power too, because this, this doesn't it doesn't apply to women; it applies to men also. And sometimes they think, "Oh, well, maybe people will make fun of me." Or they are going to say, "Well, you don't belong here." What you know? Why? Why are you raising your voice? No. So we all have to know, learn that we all have power, and not, yes. not be afraid to use it. Amen. I love that we all have power, and not be afraid to use it. It doesn't matter what, but if we have a belief, use it, and do not be afraid. You're a perfect example of it, and I admire you for that. Dolores, what a blessing to have you. You are powerful. You you shared so much here tremendously. And I know it inspires and helps so many other people become what they have 
they're meant to become, right? And what they're meant to be. Uh, because your voice is powerful. You make a difference. And that's why I'm so honored to have you here today. And I'm honored that you were able to give us this time to be able to give everyone else this type of advice. Dolores, thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving us this time. Any parting words, anything else that you'd like to share before we say goodbye? Well, I just want to say that we identify as Hispanic, so to speak, but we know that that's a language, right? Spanish is a language, but we have many, many cultures. We have many, many different languages, and we should always remember to celebrate our indigenous roots, okay? Because even though we all speak Spanish, many of us, in fact, in, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, the South American continent, we all have indigenous roots. So we should never forget that. And unfortunately, we don't have a word that describes us, you know, as, as people, uh, as brothers and sisters, we don't have a word, but we have to always remember that it may be Hispanic, but, but that's a language, okay? It's not an ethnic group. We have many, many eth ethnic groups, and we have different ethnic groups uh, that all come under the umbrella of Hispanic, especially for Hispanic, Hispanic Heritage Month. And then we all have to be united and work together to make sure that we can get, uh, we can reach that equitable place that we all want to be for all of our people here that are con consider themselves or, or labeled as Hispanics. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Muchas gracias, Dolores Huerta. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. I love that insight, indigenous, and I, I'm going to take that with me. You're Have welcome. a wonderful night. Thank you, you so much for your time. I, thank you.